Okay, so we've just booted up now. Yeah, I already put another video how to uh, add the sudo as file. Uh, so I'm just gonna do that again now because I'm gonna need to need to do that. Uh, so let's log in as root first because we don't have any privileges with our user. Do anything at the moment. Okay. Uh, one thing, if you do Control and L, you can clear the screen, like so. The same way uh, as if you type in the word clear, it does the same thing. But Control L is a lot, lot faster. Uh, okay. So, right, we need to install the sudo as well. So we use apt-get. apt-get allows us to install our packages. All our packages will come from apt-get um, or from aptitude. So we're going to do apt-get. Um, oh, on that, on the note on that, um, aptitude sometimes has a few problems I've found. It will say that you've got something when you haven't or it can't find something when it can. Um, but we can go into that into more detail uh, on a later video. But essentially if you can't find something with aptitude and it says it's not there, it's either because your sources are wrong or try and do it with apt-get and see if it turns up. So let's do apt-get install sudo. Right, I'm going to do it like this uh, just so you can see. So it's found the package, it's going to install it now uh, and it's now done that. It couldn't find a sudo as well so it's created one uh, for us. So that's good. So we've now got a sudo as well. Now we want to add our user to our sudo as well, as we did in the previous video. So uh, you can use nano, lots of different text editors, but this is the one that comes with. Um, Emacs and Vim are the, the two powerful ones that people use, uh, but they're that's sort of a, quite a steep learning curve to understand them not uh, very knowledgeable in them uh, but that is certainly if you want to really get into knowing how to manipulate text they're definitely a lot more powerful than nano nano is your equivalent to, to notepad okay so let's nano etc sudo it and we can same here we can use the tab completion that's why this is working it completes the rest of the word for us okay we can go down to where it says root under here user privilege specification we'll change that we'll add our user so I create a user called demo so we'll add that user and we're just going to copy exactly what it says for root control o what file name let's call it uh, slash etd sudo so let's rewrite over it wrote 25 lines control x come out of it control l clear the screen so we now have a user that is added to our sudo as well so if we can exit this control L um, so let's log in as our demo user and now we're logged in and let's try and do something with sudo so sudo goes minus i so it just comes up with a warning there um, if we now type in our password we now have a root prompt so we now have a user account that has root privileges okay so press exit, now we're out of um, root, we're back to our normal user with demo, uh, and now we can start doing a couple of things. So the first thing that we want to do uh, is to have a look at the sources that we currently have got, because the sources allow us to install the packages that we require to download and to be able to move forwards. So we use nano again, so we can edit what it is that we want to do slash etc slash apt slash sources dot list now because we're running this as the user not as root and this is owned by root it means that we need elevated privilege to do this so that's when we use the sudo so super user do something so super user do open with this text editor nano to this directory to this subdirectory and to this file 
in in the Windows terms where you have folders and you call everything folders in the Linux and Unix world and Mac world everything is called directories so folders don't exist anymore so open that now what this is this is every single line means do something so if there's a hash on it it means that it's been commented out it means you don't have to worry about it um, well it doesn't mean you don't have to worry about it it means that you can um, that the system will know uh, and will read it as being a commented out line so it won't get called when uh, that file is being run so that's why these so we don't even need that one at the top there for instance so this is saying deb cd rom so do not use the cd rom same as here this one's saying do use the cd rom so we don't in fact need to do that from now on so i'm going to say i'm going to comment out by putting a hash there for that uh, these are the sources uh, that we use these are the the directories that um, all of the information is taken from when you're uploading um, so when you're when you're pulling uh, and downloading different packages this is where they're all going to come from so what I want to do uh, next is to add don't need anything at the moment if I just have a look uh, we can open we come out of it here here let's find so we can find those sources uh, for back ports for uh, and really need that stack ports for the screws let's see what the back ports are This time, so there we go. So, uh, we'll just take that out of there. Uh, Windows key left and right, so we can move between screens like so. Because I'm doing this in a console, it means that it's more harder to copy and paste it. So I'm just going to write it out. Uh, see if this works. Mirror.ox.ac.uk forward slash Debian hyphen uh, backports squeeze. to me. Control O, Enter, Control X. Right, any change that you ever do to um, your sources list like this, you need to tell the system what you've done, that you've updated it. So you do that by running apt, oh well because we're not, it's, we need elevate privileges to do that. So sudo apt dash get update. Okay and it has failed on that one.
your sources to work. Okay, so what that means is I can now download uh, packages that are from backports. Um, and the way you would do that is you would do apt get minus t squeeze dash backports followed by what it is that you're trying to install. Okay, so you don't need to have this minus t squeeze dash backports unless you want the backports version. Um, you would want, for instance, um, something like Chrome or, or Ice Weasel. Ice Weasel uh, is Firefox, but the open source version of Firefox is it Firefox Ice Weasel. Um, same as Ice Dove is Thunderbird, um, and Chromium is Chrome. Um, so if you installed uh, the standard version from the, the main repository, um, you would get like version 3 or version 4 opposed to version 20 that you would get from the backports so um, that's why sometimes you want the backports because it has uh, more features and more benefits that you would want um, for for doing what it is that what you're trying to do okay right so what we want to do we want to install uh, the awesome windows manager um, so you've got a nice window manager that doesn't have all the heaviness of GNOME or KDE. Uh, it's very, very lightweight. It's very, very use. Uh, you know, for me personally, I think it's an excellent uh, window manager. Um, it's better than any other window manager I've found. Um, as I say, it's very lightweight. It's, it's written in Lua. Um, and just generally, if you've got lots of things that you want to open at the same time you want to move uh, different window sizes around like this you know you want to add another window you know you want to view something a process list that's going on whilst you're running an application in another window you've, you've got that usability that you won't get with uh, anything else without having a lot of mouse interpretation and that's the whole point of awesome you don't need to use the mouse it's all about the keyboard it's all designed around the keyboard so we've got sudo so far and we've updated our sources list so let's install some packages let's install so we need x so xorg that is the x organization that is what is going to allow us to put awesome on top of it because awesome runs on x so we need x so we need awesome um, some other packages I like, I like um, Emacs, um, as I said before, to, to be able to manipulate the text better. Uh, and it's just a good habit to get into to use Emacs. Um, so let's start with those three. Ah, right, so if you get this message, because that you're doing it, and you're running that command without elevated privileges. So you can either type in sudo, like that. Or, much nicer way of doing it, much faster way of doing it, is by typing sudo space exclamation mark exclamation mark. And what that means is run the last command with elevated privileges. So, if you hold down shift and press page up and page down like I'm doing now, you can go back up and read what it's saying. So we go from here, so it's, these are all the files that need to be installed. They're all the dependencies that are needed for the files. Suggested packages. And at the bottom you'll see it says zero upgraded, 127 newly installed, zero to remove and zero not upgraded. If there was any problem um, between a conflict between one package and another, this is where it would tell you and say, well, we need to remove this program to add this, or we, this particular module, uh, it needs to be changed or downgraded to a different version for this to happen. All of that information is here. If you get an option that says yes or no to one of them, you can say no, uh, and it will come up with a different way of resolving the problem. So. But we'll come to that when we see it. So we're going to do this. We're going to install these these things now. So I'll just 
just let that run and when that finishes we shall come back to that okay so it's almost done now uh, it's just setting up all the files now uh, and then the next thing that we need to do after we've done that okay so we're there now so control L to clear the screen is that we need to install XDM and then what that will allow us to do is that when it boots up it was going to boot XDM before it boots into awesome and what XDM does is it allows us for a login prompt to log in with a username and password uh, and that user that logs in through XDM will be the user that is logged into awesome so we're running awesome as that user because if you don't do this what will happen is that you'll come to a prompt like we've got there that demo at Debian and then you would have to start the X um, every time which is the command start X that's what it does it starts X so we don't want to do that we don't have to type start X to then log in and do that we would much prefer to have uh, something that manages our login so that's what XDM does so you don't have to use this but it makes sense oh, there we go. We need to a few privileges to do that So here it's the update rc.d, that means that when it boots it's going to take precedence. Excellent. Um, reboot reboots, halt halts. Um, and so now I'm going to reboot uh, and see. Ooh. Okay, it won't let me reboot because the command doesn't exist. And the reason it says uh, the command is not found, the reason the command is not found is that the command is not found for this user. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist at all, it just means that this user can't see that command. Every user has their own set of commands that they can and cannot do. So sudo minus i, in this case, this is a bringing me to my root prompt so I can reboot, or I could type in sudo space reboot, it's the same difference. See how that works for root but doesn't work for my user. just word on that boot that boot up service what it's doing is it's going through it's pick up all the, the current services that I've put in and um, so the networking it's looking for DHCP services um, just generally what the boot up services are so here we can see welcome to Debian the reason it's saying Debian is because that's the host name we gave it uh, login prompt so now this is what it's gonna do every time boots opposed to give us the prompt where we would have to log in as a user and then start X we don't want to do that this makes more sense. Okay, so let's log in as our user. Yeah, we'll just like that. Here it is. And now we are logged in to awesome. You see we have the time here. And it's actually a replication of what I've got above it. And it's as easy as that. You're now in there. You're now in the problem. So the next video will be how to move around here. Um, how to add windows, how to move those windows about, how to run particular commands uh, and now we can really start understanding what's going on and there seems to be an update for VirtualBox so that's the other next thing we have to do as well is we have to install the VirtualBox guest editions as well okay so that is it